verses 9 through 11. I'm almost done with this particular series. Amen. As we approached it going backwards. Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 9 through 11. You get that please stand. That's your reverence reading the word of our God. Amen. The word of our Lord is found in Romans 8 chapter and thus reads, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, then he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Let us pray. Father God, we come now in the master's name of Jesus, thanking you for bringing us into your house one more time. Thanking you, God, uh, for allowing us, amen, to wake up with our hearts and our minds set on coming to worship. Now, God, that we're here, we ask that you meet our needs right where we are, Father God. You said that if we would come, uh, oh Lord, in, in obedience unto you, Father God, and be willing to hear of your word and agree to do your word, Father God, you said in Joshua 24 that you would we have a unilateral covenant that whatsoever we need, you would provide us. So, God, we've done what you asked us to do. Now we ask you to feed us with manna from on high. Empty our cups, oh God, that you might fill them to the brim this morning. That when we leave here, we know we've been in your presence. Let your train fill the house, God. Uh, so much so that your uh, anointing and your spirit uh, uh, saturates the air and the atmosphere. Lord, and we'll be so careful to praise you. Now, God, let your word speak to our heart this morning as never before. We need you, God. And sometimes we don't say it, but we recognize that we can do nothing without you. All of our righteousness, all of our goodness, all of everything that we have come from you. And God, we want to bow just for a minute just to say thank you. So, Father God, as we go forward, let your word fall fresh on us, God, that we might be changed by your word, Lord. It, it may make our lights brighter and might make our pathways uh, even brighter, God, that we might be the people that you called for in, in this corner, in this world, God, to stand for you, Father God, and stand boldly and declare that you are our everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. I, I've been talking, we've been talking quite a bit about the idea of the Spirit of God living in us, the Holy Spirit living in us. After Christ went back to sit at the right hand of the Father, he said, look here, uh, I'm going to send you something. I said, because Christ had been walking uh, with the disciples. He was the outside, amen. And then when he left, he left because there's something that needed to dwell on the inside of man, just as Christ dwell with them on the outside. And so we talked about uh, the idea of being uh, disciplined uh, by the Holy Spirit and being disciplined and obedient uh, to God. We also, amen, talked about uh, the Spirit of God as it relates to us in our mortal lives and as it changes us and allows us to be made uh, a new or uh, fresh. Today, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, not only the gift of the Holy Spirit, amen, but I also want to talk about life in the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. And so, so my brothers and sisters, when I say the gift of the Holy Spirit, I don't want you to run away with that uh, because there are two uh, uh, ideas here that first come up. One of them uh, is the gift, the gift D of the Holy Spirit. And the other one is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Next week I want to cover the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but this week I want to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Don't get them twisted because a lot of, uh, a lot of theologists and a lot of denominations uh, hang on the balance of the idea of how the Holy Spirit rests and abides in our lives. How, uh, my brothers and sisters, and so long, I don't want you to get tied up or messed up in that uh, situation. If you look at Acts 
uh, 2 and 38, uh, which ways it says if you repent and get baptized, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. The having the Holy Spirit through water baptism makes you saved or makes you a Christian. But to get the power of the Holy Spirit, it takes more than that. But I want to talk, as I said, I want to talk about uh, being spirit-filled and the spiritual gifts that are bestowed. First Corinthians 12 uh, uh, starts out with the spiritual gifts bestowed on a person. When I mean spiritual gifts bestowed, I'm talking about uh, spiritual gifts that are honored on a man, or spiritual gifts that are given to a person uh, for a, a, a ministerial situation, spiritual gifts. Now it says here, now uh, dear brother and sister, uh, regarding your question about the special abilities that the Spirit gives unto us. All of us have some abilities that the Spirit gives us, amen, to do certain things for God. I, I don't want uh, you to uh, misunderstand this. You know that when you were uh, still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. That's what we did before Christ. So uh, I, I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God can ever curse God or say anything about God that is untrue. I uh, understand that. When you, the Spirit of God, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost, will only speak of Christ. He only speaks, he doesn't speak of anything negative. And if you cannot speak like that, then, then you don't have uh, uh, the spirit living on the inside of you. Amen. Uh, 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 the spirit, you know, uh, 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 so I, I want you to know that no one speaking by the spirit, as I said, will curse Jesus and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except he do it by the spirit. You remember when Peter, uh, amen, was talking to Jesus and Christ said, listen, who the men say that I am? He went on to give him uh, some things about who he thought he was, but he said, now who do you say that I am? And Peter said, well, listen here, uh, uh, you, 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 you're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. And he said, wait a minute, Peter, uh, let me tell you something, uh, uh, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. The only way you got that is is that the Holy Ghost had to reveal it to you. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we're so close uh, to things that we don't understand, amen, or we don't see what the Spirit, amen, is trying to give us and trying to show us. And in Peter's case, Peter could not say what he said about Christ without being able to be transformed by the Spirit of God, 